Okay, we're back for another week of masterclasses. Today, we're doing more of a beginner to intermediate guide, as I mentioned, for how to play the early to mid game. Uh, but this guide is also super useful for those of the higher elo. Sometimes you just forget about the basics or uh, yeah, just forget about them. So don't worry about that. Uh, everyone will be able to benefit from this video. Uh, for those who have questions, if it's pertaining to the slide at hand, then feel free to unmute your mic or type in the VC chat and I will try to answer it right away. And then for bigger questions, please leave them for the end. I'm happy to go over the time limits at the end and just answer anything. So uh, without further ado, let's get straight into it. So some terminology we'll talk about in today's class. Uh, because it's the early to mid game, stages are gonna be extremely important. Uh, so basically like how to read a stage number or like what is a stage number, uh, we'll just separate into X and Y. So the first number is gonna be the stage number and then you'll see a little dash and the second one is going to be the round number. So for example, uh, two one, right? This, this is just how it's read. It's gonna be stage two, round one. So like the first combat round of stage two and like it's an augment round. So that's what you'll see. If you see like three, five, that means it's stage three, round five and so on. So some other ones, early game, what classifies as early game? So this is all of stage one plus two. So stage one is our minion rounds and then stage five is our five combat rounds, uh, the carousel and also Krugs. <clears throat> and then the second part of today's class, the mid game, it's going to be talking about all of stage three and then the very beginning of stage four. And then last but not least, what is the econ interval? Basically, it's just making interest. You'll hear these terms thrown around a lot. Uh, it's basically basically just making money, making gold, um, making that 10 or making that 20, making that 30 gold and getting extra money through interest. Uh, so sometimes you'll hear, oh, instead of playing your strongest board, if you lose, it's better to just make econ or make interest. Uh, that This is exactly what it means. So yeah, uh, those are just some common terms. Moving on more to the guide. Uh, we're going to just talk about two things, very simple, the early and the mid. So early is stage one, stage two, and then mid game is stage three and the beginning of stage four. At the very end, we'll have plenty of time for questions, and then any reflection or just anything we want to add on then. Okay, so let's get straight into it. How to play the early to mid game. Let's talk about stage one first. So you spawn in, uh, there's no more like run around, get your item carousel rights. It's a, your region. So right off the bat, you already want to be thinking like, okay, what region do I want to pick? Definitely pick one that synergizes with your legend. So right now on today's patch, patch 13.21, the most popular one is Earth. So this makes this this helps you get tomes, this helps you get different emblems. Uh, so what does this mean? Pick a region, region that synergizes with you. So if you are playing Earth, look for like Godwill's Grove, getting that plus one on your bench. So then you could get crazy synergies like nine Demacia, nine Bilgewater, nine Ionia. Placidium Library gives you another emblem, so this is really good. If you have multiple emblems, then you can continue stacking from there. And then something that's a bit underrated, Marcel Magnum, uh, getting your two extra fawns, or I guess they're called Tactician Crowns now. Uh, even if you're like level 7, then technically you can play a level 9 board, and this will help you a lot to getting like 9 Demacia or like 9 Ionia. So. If you see any of these regions, make sure you go for those if you're playing Earth. On the other hand, if you're playing something like TF, then uh, regions such as like Aaron Mount are super good. Getting those extra item components with your Pandora's items means that you can reroll many at once to really get your BIS. And then the last example I have to give here is like Ezreal with your buried treasures to get extra components on 2-1. Regions such as Glassic Industries, which give you extra gold as you make items synergize super well. So just want to make sure as soon as you load in, make sure you know what legend you're playing and pick a region that synergizes with you. And hopefully uh, that will be the region that plays. So the next part is during stage one, um, as you may all know, it's super important to start collecting your pairs and get those two star units ASAP. But it's also super important to be collecting units, not only that are like of higher tier, so just like um, good units compared to like good, good early game units compared to like bad early game units. But uh, you also be wanting to look at your items and pick up units that cater towards those. So if you get like a bow sword glove, um, these are more like AD offensive, you could say because of the sword. There are still AP variations, but for something like this, uh, you can't be playing like Sorks early or like any AP. It's a lot harder uh, because your signs could be like Last Whisper or even like Infinity Edge. So uh, bow sword glove you'll be looking for like iona and oxys Demacia instead of swords but if you have more of like a quote-unquote ap or magic damage opener like raw tier cloak uh, then you'll be wanted to look at like sorks voids invokers instead of the latter so for example right like bone sword like something like a smear could use this extremely good um 
However, a Samira can't use like a Rod and Tears super good, and then vice versa. Like a Malzahar would be very happy with Rod and Tears, um, but are not too happy with like bows. Okay, and then the other the other last parts of this, uh, sometimes you get a gold opener on stage one. So normally you spawn in with uh, one item, right? And then your other ones, or you'll have three items in total after stage one, or three components. Sometimes you'll get like two plus gold, and then sometimes you get one plus gold. So it really depends on your opener. But if you have a gold opener, um, you can make the decision to either sell your, like, if, you, if the gold opener comes in forms of units, you can either sell them to make econ, or if they are useful, like your orb drops, let's say you get a Nico, right? And then you check the Excel, oh, it's a wood, and you have Excel already, oh, you can start stacking that Nico right away, and your gold opener is actually super good. So uh, make sure you make your decision either to use that gold opener to make more money early, and you kind of sack because you don't have the items for combat, or you keep the units and just play a strong board, but you're down some items. And then the very last one to do on stage one is to make sure that if you're playing Earth, that you tailor your traits for 1-4 uh, for your 2-1 tone, your ancient archive. So what I mean by this is if you get a board like this, uh, you want to be having minimum six traits in order to, for the Toma traits to cater to one of them. Uh, so this is a really good combination, Kale, Cassiopeia, Cholgath, because every one of these traits are really good right now. Like Bruiser plus one is super good. Uh, Demonster plus one is probably the best emblem right now. Invoker is not that good, but then Noxus is good, Shreem is good, Slayer is good, Void is good. So the, probably the worst one here is Invoker, and you have a, a much higher chance of hitting something else. So this is what you could play on 1-4. Obviously, this won't be your 2-1 board. You'll be playing something stronger, uh, but you're just playing something like this to activate as many tone or any, as many traits as possible. And then on your 2-1, once you rip that Ancient Archives tome, uh, it accommodates or like it, uh, it tracks the traits from the previous round, which is why you do 1 4, you play a board that has the traits, and then on 2 1, it'll take the 1 4 traits and it'll work out super well. And then you just play around that. You hit Demacia, you hit Demacia, have you, you play Demacia, you hit Shurima, you, you play Shurima, and uh, it's pretty simple for there. So Moving on, uh, what does this mean? It means that because of like the current meta, um, it's very often that your game is your game direction is decided on two one because of these tomes. So if we look at like the augments over here, right? These are the best performing uh, augments on two one. So if we look at them, Noxus, Demacia, Ionia, Rogue, Void, Sork, and then Rising Infamy is just the build water econ one. So this means that six out of the seven best augments on two one right now are like trait related they're basically tomes um minus these two you will get you can get from ancient archives earth which is why earth is so good right now uh so yeah most of the time you'll know what you're doing from 2-1 makes the game pretty easy pretty good so moving on to stage two the entire point of stage two is to make as much money as possible health of course you want to save hp where possible however you want to be, make as much econ as possible in order to really boost up your mid game so stage three plus uh, so this means we either want to be only win streaking or only lose streaking. We want to be making our 10, 20, 30, 40 gold for interest. And then any augments that just give us gold as well, like Ancient Archives, the uh, gold augment for Earth, it gives you plus three gold. And that's actually super good early because um, making gold early make, helps you make gold later. <clears throat> So make sure you make, you focus on econ uh, using these three strategies. And then the very last one is regarding the 2-1 augments. So early game combat augments, apart from all the nerfs that have been happening in the past couple of patches, um, early game the combat augments are not as impactful compared to like item power or trait power. So something like a gift from the fallen, that won't really help you if you have a, like three units on your board, four units, even something like tons of stats, right? Or even long distance, thing, long distance pals. However, if you get something like a, what's well, really good, like Demacia Crest, which is super good, and you put it on a, like a two-star Alawi or two-star Mazahar, you get that Radiant item. Now you're getting your power for your board from items and traits rather than just pure combat augments. So combat augments, still good. However, uh, you can get a lot more power for your board from items or trait. So that's what you'll be doing on 2-1, just selecting your augments and then kind of deciding what you want to do from there. Uh, moving on, playing your actual board. So there's kind of two directions you could go on stage 2-1. You go for the W, go for the wins, or you go for the Ls, 
of the lose streak. Now, both are fine. Ideally, win streak is better uh, because you save HP and you get that plus one gold every time you win. However, lose streak is also uh, very acceptable. It gives you prio and a higher pick, uh, pick chance, or not pick up. Uh, you're able to pick your item on carousel faster because you'll most likely either be first pick or second pick and also just a streak gold it is easier to lose streak than to win streak so you could guarantee your five lose streak there and make a lot of money that way now how to decide between these two is basically just the strength of your board so let's say you have a weak opener or uh, you're planning on re-rolling then you'll be inclined to lose streak so this is what your lose streak board would look like let's say that you have bruiser heart that you pick up from your 2-1 or even it's like ancient archives and you get bruiser and you're like okay well it looks like i'm going to be re-rolling uh bruisers trogath and cassiopeia well then stay level three make 10 and you now you're looking to lose streak vice versa you rip that archive and you get demacia woohoo then you could be playing a stronger board something like a on a cassiopeia or on a malzahar or an alawi uh, any two-star unit you just want to put demacia on and then you'll get that uh, radiant item then you want to be leveling to four on to one and contesting that win streak and going from there. The third, the third uh, kind of situation is let's say that uh, you have a strong open or you have a strong opener or just even a board that can like kill units. Maybe you don't win all the fights like you scout around. Someone's like crazy strong, but your board is still good and you'll be able to win some fights. Still level to four anyway and contest the win streak. Um, sometimes people think like, oh, unless my board is the absolute strongest. On stage two then I should just be looking to like lose streak because then I'll lose to someone uh, but hey sometimes matchmaking you'll be able to just dodge the really strong person or who knows maybe on your 2-2 shop you hit something crazy and now you're stronger than them so if your board is still at least good level to four anyway play your strongest board and even if you end up like win win lose win win or like win lose win 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 uh, at least you're still making money from winning and saving HP so that's what to look for on stage 2-1. Uh, and then the rest of the stage, basically 2-2 two, two, all the way to 2-6. So we have four more combat rounds. 1-2, this is carousel, and then 3-4. Uh, we're just following this general rule of win, keep trying to win. Lose, keep trying to lose. Uh, of course, there are some other, some more like advanced tactics. Let's say that you scout around, like uh, our, our example will be, let's say we win, win, win. <clears throat> Okay, that's sorry, that's a bad example. But what I'm trying to say here is let's say you scout around and you've been winning, but everyone else now in your pool is crazy strong. Then maybe you're like, okay, uh, I'm not killing anything here. I'm just going to make money instead. And then vice versa. Let's say you lose, 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 but you, felt you faced all the strong people in your lobby. That means on these last two rounds, you can go for the win and try to two streak from there. So generally, just to keep it simple, if you win, keep trying to win keep that streak going and if you lose keep trying to lose keep that streak going unless unless like you're guaranteed something so unless you're guaranteed to lose or you think you could win two in a row uh, on these last two so that's how to play the rest of stage two of course on carousel get an item that you need and then go into krugs so uh, that's all for stage two and then moving on to stage three now, so Krugs is gone. Uh, hopefully we got some money, made maybe 40 gold on Krugs, got some items, and we're moving into stage three now. Stage three one comes across, and first thing to note is now on three one, in stage three in general, player damage is increased. So now when you lose a round, you're going to be taking an extra three damage just from losing a round in general. So this means that now our priority in stage three is no longer just making money, it's saving HP and just constructing a good board. So stage two, our priority was making money. Stage three, uh, we're no longer just looking at money, we're looking at HP and just a good board uh, because of course like the player damage increased in stage three. So uh, that's the first point here. So now we want to be playing our strongest board. And then if we're super rich or win streaking on 3-1, we can even go level six. Um, this is perfectly fine. You don't always have to stay level five on 3-1, but make sure that you are either, either super rich or win streaking, or you at least have a good unit that you can play. And then the very last thing is uh, we can slam some items. So Krugs just happened, right? Krugs is considered 2-7. We beat, we beat the three Krugs. We got some good items. Uh, we never want to be sitting on three or more components. Even sitting on three is not good. Uh, so make sure you slam some items. Even if they're suboptimal, they'll strengthen your board, kill more units, maybe even win the round, save HP, and 
that's very good, right? And what I mean by don't set on, th set on three components or more is because to make an item, right, you only need to use com two components. That means if you're sitting on like one, two, and three, uh, you will always have at least like one open component. So that means if we like make an item with one, two, then we could play around three. Or we make an item with one, three, we could play around two. So that's why uh, don't sit on three components because you can at least always slam something most of the time and then play around the very last one on carousel or maybe from an augment. So yeah, uh, stage three one, that's fine. Uh, moving on to stage three two, this is the next like kind of important uh, round. Uh, within a stage, sometimes there's just like no activity rounds where you shouldn't be, ideally you shouldn't be rolling, you shouldn't be leveling. So we'll talk about that after, but three two is an important one uh, because it's a perfect interval for level six. So this is the common time you're going to be going level six. Uh, after leveling, if you have multiple pairs or your board is just not very good, uh, you can roll a little bit. So if you're playing Noxus, get that Cassio, Samira, Swain two, Ionia, get that Jin, Irelia set two, and so on. These are just ex some examples of uh, reasonable two stars to hit when, re -ro when rolling down on six, uh, if you're sitting on a couple of them pairs. And what I mean why it's a perfect interval for level six is because XP is in increments of four uh, for four gold. So whenever you're looking at your XP bar, always make sure that when you're leveling, uh, at least in the early game, that it is, or at least in this scenario, uh, it's a multiple of four because it's perfect, right? We'll go eight, 12, 16, 20, and is, uh, you'll be spending the least amount of gold in order to hit level six. Like you won't be spending excess. So make sure, basically just from this, you're level 6 on 3-2. And then the very last thing is moving on to the next stage, or the next round on 3-3. Three, three. Uh, this is not really, this is not a round to level. Um, if you are rolling, you will be rolling on 3-2 anyway. So there's not really any activity, just focus on your positioning. Uh, if you hit something good in your shop, focus on playing your strongest board. But nothing crazy on 3-3, three, three. just remember 3-2 three, level 6. Okay, and then the next round where we are doing something is on 3-5, so this is right after Carousel. Um, there's some scenarios here. So let's say you're extremely rich. You've been win streaking everything. Uh, you're now on an eight win streak. You're 100 HP. You got plenty of money. Your board's good, items good, life is good. You're going to be leveling to seven here. You might be thinking, oh my God, level seven so early. Yep, keep pushing that streak, um, save HP, keep getting money. So that's the first scenario where you'll be going level seven on 3-5. The second one is the opposite. If you are of a super weak board, you've been loose streaking this entire time, like eight loose streak or something like that, and you're super rich, you can also level to seven. And then in both of these scenarios, uh, actually in the second scenario, you will be rolling to stabilize after you level to seven, get a strong front line. And then depending on the board you're playing, just get at least like one star copies of your main carry. So like either if you're playing like Strategist or Shrima, you get the Azirin. Nyla for Vanquishers or Bilgewater, Mordekaiser for Noxus, Kaiser Fjord for playing Challengers, um, at least stabilize. And then you, because you've leveled seven and rolled down, you'll most likely win these next two and you'll be in a good spot. Uh, and then the other way is, let's say you're like, you're super rich, you're, you're very healthy, like win streaking. Uh, you don't necessarily need to roll down, just keep playing your strongest board and saving HP. So let's say you have leveled, right? Um, you, don't wanna be you don't wanna be rolling after on 3-6, you want to wait until after Wolves to either roll down again or sack for leveling. And that's what I meant, like 3-6. Um, so this is the round right after we've leveled. So this is level 7. And then the round after, we don't really want to be rolling because we don't have that much gold anymore. And we already rolled the round previous. So just focus on positioning a strongest board. That's kind of a no activity round. So just summing up stage 3 is stage 3-1, right? So this is 3-1. Rich or win streaking. You can go level six. Yay. Second one is on three, two. We're going to be going level seven. Or sorry, not level seven, level six. It's a perfect timing. Super good. Uh, this is a no activity round. Three, three is no activity. We get our item of choice on carousel. And then three, five is almost the same thing as three, one. So if you're rich, then you can go level seven. If you're, well, rich either way, right? Rich through win streaking, rich through lose streaking, you'll be going level seven. And then the very last one is no activity again on three, six. Just focus on your positioning, focus on strongest board, and then we'll enter wolves. So that's it uh, for stage three. Um, and then of course, like just keep trying to play your strongest board depending on what happens in your shops. And then you hit wolves, another PB round. You get your items, you get a bit of gold. And then we enter 
our very end of the mid game slash transition to late game stage four one and this is one of the most important stages however i think i've summed it down to pretty pretty like simple terms so don't even look at these boards yet um the first thing to note is we're now stage four right so now we'll be taking four extra damage every time we lose a round just from player damage so now we really want to be winning um it's very rare that you you try to you ever try to lose streak on stage four unless you have some special augment like final reserve so we're trying to be winning here because you take a lot of damage if you lose if you're not already level seven so let's say you weren't really rich on three five and you just stayed level six which is perfectly fine on 4-1, you're going to level 7 and roll it down to stabilize. And remember this stabilize term, it just means that you've rolled down enough where your board is strong and you can start winning. So you're two-starring your useful units in the, both the front line and the back line. And then remember at the end of the round, maybe 5 to sec 10 seconds if you're not super fast or super comfortable for the comp, um, stop rolling, start itemizing your units and positioning properly in order to win the round. So that's it. That's what you would want to be doing on 4-1. Very rarely do you not roll on level 7 and roll down. Uh, let's, the two scenarios would be the extremes. So let's say your board is extremely good. You've hit everything from your natural shops. You don't have to roll a single time and your board is insane. Some, let, let's say you hit like this, like almost everything 2-star, your, your challenger board. Um, like challengers board, not challenger board. And then you've hit this on level 7 and you don't have to really roll, then then you don't have to roll. Or the complete opposite is um, you are extremely rich even though you're not win streaking. So let's say that like you're just like win loss, whatever, but you're super rich, like extremely rich, like Jeff Bezos rich, then you don't have to roll down. You can just wait for the next round to, uh, to level to eight um, and then you could roll from there. So it's the two extremes where the scenario is you don't need to roll on level seven. Either A, you've hit everything, so you're just not rolling for anything, or two, you're super rich and you wanna you 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 can afford to level to eight on four two and then roll from there for to have better odds of hitting your four cost, maybe some five cost units. And then yeah, I'd say after this round you start getting into your late game. Uh, so we're gonna end it here for the mid game. And then the, the examples I provided is just like a level 7 challenger board or a level 7 bruiser shrima board. Um, yeah, so just make sure that your board is good <laughs> by, by rolling down. Uh, make sure you save some time to itemize and position. And um, if you're able to like not even 5 streak on stage 4, uh, but just like win like maybe 3 out of the 5 or like 4 of the 5 of the rounds, you should be in a pretty like solid spot because those who win a lot or those who lose on stage four are going to be taking so much damage let's say even lose like three rounds you're taking 12 damage just from like player damage which is a lot so uh definitely try to win on stage four and that's it so uh, we can now enter our q a session um, i'm happy to answer any questions at all